we have transformed our understanding of the cosmos in just a few months, thanks to awe-inspiring pictures captured by the James Webb Space Telescope. The largest telescope ever launched into orbit is the JWST. We finally saw its initial images on July 11, 2022, and they were spectacular. Expansive celestial vistas of dust and gas were revealed, as were the most distant corners of the universe. There were enormous interacting galaxies and stars approaching the end of their lifespans. Yet, even the most remarkable images are merely the surface. Vast amounts of data that will alter our comprehension of the cosmos lie behind them. Join us as we delve into how the James Webb Telescope's astonishing new picture of city lights surprises the entire globe. Examining the far reaches of the universe to discover how the earliest galaxies formed is one of the JWST's research objectives. This is feasible because light takes billions of years to traverse our universe. The JWST observes these phenomena as they appeared billions of years ago. When it collects this light, astronomers measure distances in light years, which is the farthest distance light can travel in a year. To account for this fact, the team's initial graphic emphasized this. It was a deep field photograph presented on July 11, 2022, by U.S. President Joe Biden while he was speaking from the White House. As the Hubble Space Telescope concentrated on a single patch of the sky for 10 consecutive days starting on December 18, 1995, deep fields gained fame. The selected area was just a minuscule speck, comprising about one millionth of the entire sky. The majority of the 3,000 previously unknown objects found by Hubble were galaxies situated billions of light years away. A similar tiny section of the sky is covered by the JWST's deep field, which focuses on the galaxy cluster SMAX 0723. The actual galaxy SMAX 0723 is 4.6 billion light years distant. The more remote galaxies behind it are magnified by its strong gravitational field. The background galaxies are distorted into large arcs where the gravitational field is strongest. In one case, it was found that it took a distant galaxy's light 13.1 billion years to reach the telescope after traveling through space. The light being emitted stretches as the universe expands. Because they are so far away, the main target galaxies of the JWST have stretched visible light from their stars into the infrared spectrum. Astronomers can directly compare JWST views with visible light images of nearby galaxies taken by Hubble and other telescopes. By collecting data at those wavelengths, this will show how galaxies evolve over cosmic time, growing and consolidating into the structures we observe today. Even more astonishing than the sheer number of galaxies in the JWST's initial deep field image is how rapidly it was captured, in just hours as opposed to days. Practically wherever it explores, it cannot help but find galaxies. Galaxy clusters are the only objects acting as magnifying lenses. Scientists use the JWST to capture an image of a pair of galaxies designated VV191, so they could study how the light from one of the pair changed as it passed through the other. The results of the study will reveal the properties of the intervening galaxies' dust, galaxies, and black holes. Stefan's Quintet, a dense group of galaxies, was shown in one of the JWST's early photos. For galaxies in this group are gravitationally interacting with each other because they are so close together. The group's fifth galaxy merely seems nearby. In reality, it is much closer to us and just happens to lie along the same line of sight. Together, the quartet of interacting galaxies forms a laboratory in which astronomers can investigate how galaxies interact and merge with one another. Such mergers are thought to have been quite common in the early universe, where they served as the primary pathway for galaxies to evolve into the massive star cities we see today. Supermassive black holes, one of which is currently present at the center of every galaxy, are also believed to have grown as a result of these mergers. The JWST examined Stefan's quintet using its NIRCAM and MIRI sensors. The MIRI images specifically surprised astronomers, as the galaxy's shapes were not what they had expected. Another surprising result from the MIRI instrument came from the phantom galaxy M74. M74, a spiral galaxy 32 million light-years from Earth, is nearly face-on to us. For studying the enormous spiral arms that give spiral galaxies their name, it is a favorite, but no one has ever before seen it so clearly. For the first time, the spiral arms of the galaxy, where star formation is taking place, 
can be seen extending down into the galaxy's core. Collaborations will be a key focus, combining the JWST's new observations with those from existing observatories to unlock a deeper understanding of the astronomical objects being studied, in addition to the new discoveries that everyone hopes the telescope will make. The life cycle of stars, observing deeply into the clouds where stars are formed, is one area in which infrared astronomy excels. This is because dust particles, molecules, and atoms scatter less light at longer wavelengths. In reality, at infrared wavelengths, the very objects that block our view of the star nurseries become almost transparent. Another image from the JWST was NIRCAM's observation of the 7,500 light-year distant star-forming region NGC 3324 in the Carina Nebula. The Carina Nebula is beautiful, although it is just gas and dust being sculpted by starlight. It appears like a landscape. It's remarkable that you can now use infrared to look inside it. What was once hidden is now openly displayed in all its splendor. It was named the Cosmic Cliffs when it was first discovered because the vast gaseous cliffs resembled a mountain range. It was actually the edge of a massive cavity that was slowly being worn away by the powerful ultraviolet radiation from young stars. Pillars of Creation The Hubble Space Telescope's famous image of the Pillars of Creation is one of its most renowned images. These are the star-forming regions in the Eagle Nebula, a much larger cloud of interstellar gas. The JWST has recently conducted observations of the same region with its NIRCAM and MIRI instruments, allowing it to see deeper than ever before into the vast star nebula. The sporadic bright orange features that occasionally appear towards the tips of the fingers are one of the image's highlights. These shock waves are the result of newborn stars that are only now starting to generate energy through nuclear fusion. Enormous jets of material are blasted during these intense processes, colliding with the dusty cocoon surrounding each star, blowing it away, and exposing the developing star to the rest of the universe. A similar but intriguingly distinct landscape is revealed by switching from the near-infrared image to Miri's mid-infrared range. Due to their lack of brightness at these wavelengths, most of the stars have now vanished. Instead, Emissions from naturally occurring compounds known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons accentuate the dusty pillars. The most fascinating feature, though, is that occasionally brilliant stars can be glimpsed at the tips of the gaseous fingers. These are the young stars themselves, and a planetary system may surround each of them. The Miri team was taken aback by the result, even though they had always anticipated this observation. The JWST's new views of the pillars of creation will enable researchers to test their understanding of star formation and improve their computer simulations of the process by providing more information than ever before for a better understanding of how galaxies renew their star-producing capacity. It is crucial to know more about the exact number of young stars in these regions, the distribution of their masses, as well as the precise amounts of gas and dust that compose the nebula. At the other end of the stellar life cycle, the JWST has also been illuminating the way stars die. Sun-like stars expand to become red giant stars before contracting into white dwarfs, which are stellar remnants. They break apart during this collapse, ejecting their outer layers to form a planetary nebula, a term that is terribly inaccurate. The Southern Ring Nebula in the JWST's image demonstrates how spectacular this process can be. The star periodically ejected shells of matter from its outer layers for thousands of years until it turned into a white dwarf. The remaining portion of the star would then start to contract and heat up, causing a new cycle of energy production to begin, a new round of pulsation which would cause the ejection of a new shell of material. This continued endlessly until there was simply insufficient matter left to pressurize the star's core to ignite nuclear fusion anymore. It became a white dwarf at this point. This is what our own sun will experience in about 4.5 billion years. Exoplanets. Even the JWST cannot provide a detailed image of a planet outside our solar system. It will require dedicated space missions with several space telescopes working together in clever ways to create anything with any level of detail from an exoplanet, especially one the size of Earth, because it is so small and dark compared to its central star. Nonetheless, the JWST has captured one image of an exoplanet. Its designation is HIP 65426b. Its mass ranges from 6 to 12 times that of Jupiter, and its orbital distance from its star is approximately 100 times that of Earth's from the Sun. 
the JWST used coronagraphs on its near-cam and MIRI equipment to view the extraterrestrial planet. A coronagraph dims the brightness of the main star, making the surrounding stars more visible. The reason for its name is that astronomers created an instrument to study the corona, or fainter outer atmosphere, of our own Sunday. It can now be used to detect fainter objects, including exoplanets close to distant stars. On the exoplanet WASP-96b, astronomers performed precisely this with the nearest instrument of the JWST. The dispersion of infrared light from 0.6 to 2.8 micrometers was displayed on the resulting graph. WASP-96b is notable since it frequently crosses in front of its parent star. Consequently, only a small fraction of the star's light passes through the exoplanet's atmosphere before being absorbed by its atoms and molecules at their preferred wavelengths. The intensity at those wavelengths decreases as a result. In this case, the JWST showed that the atmosphere of WASP-96b contained water vapor. The planet is called a hot Jupiter because it orbits its star so closely that a year lasts only 3.4 days, while its mass is about half that of Jupiter in our solar system. Due to the necessity of creating a computer model of the planet's atmosphere, the results are still in the preliminary phase. The exoplanet's atmosphere's height, thickness of any clouds, and the relative abundance of different gases in the atmosphere are all considered in the model. The next phase of this research is to expand it to progressively smaller exoplanets, eventually analyzing planets the size of Earth. Smaller worlds have less dense atmospheres, making this more challenging but scientists are hopeful. We seem to be at the very, very beginning of an exciting journey. Moreover, it is still early. The images that have already been released are more like proofs of concept than complete scientific findings. They represent assurance from the involved astronomers that the telescope is functioning and that the analysis results and scientific discoveries will follow. Right now, it's incredibly exciting and entertaining. Everything the JWST touches reveals something new, and they are things that make you say, wow, thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.